Okay, in this video we're going to talk about a few of the blocks. Um, blocks are items that allow you to kind of enhance your Moodle page um, and add different things like portfolios, uh, blogs, so on and so forth. Um, in this video we're only going to talk about a couple of the blocks. There's a lot of different ones. Feel free to try out other ones that we don't discuss. Um, there are definitely some, some good uses for them. Uh, but for the sake of what this course is trying to accomplish, we're going to talk about just a handful of these blocks. I already have editing turned on. And on the right over here, I'm going to see, in this case, three gray, bo gray boxes. These are essentially blocks. For example, this first one uh, is latest, latest news. I, as a teacher, could add um, any information I might want to share with my students. Like, uh, hey, we have a test coming up next week, or let's say it's a science class and some new discovery was made, I could put that information there. Um, upcoming events uh, is nice, but um, we're going to show you the calendar feature and that kind of does, uh, does a better job of what upcoming events tries to do. Uh, another nice block is recent activity. This allows you as a teacher to see what students have turned in assignments or access different, uh, different resources on your Moodle um, in one convenient place right there. Let's go ahead and take a look at blocks. First one we're going to look at is a blog menu. A lot of these functions are fairly standard, so I'm not going to actually demonstrate some of them. I will discuss, uh, discuss them, though. In blog menu, if I wanted to add a new entry, I could just click here, title the blog, write a blog, add pictures and text, whatever I wanted to uh, add to it. I would do that there. I could then view my entries here, um, set preferences here. Um, really, anytime I wanted to, to do a blog, this is where I do it. It doesn't look as nice as Blogger or some of the sites that are, are built specifically for that, but it does do a good job of creating a, a basic blog. The blog tags. Um, in, this, in this feature, you can add tags. The blog tags will just um, allow your students to to view different topics that you've discussed in your blog. Next one I want to talk about is the ePortfolio. With the portfolio, what you can do is allow your students to add uh, assignments to the portfolio. Now, the nice thing about the portfolio is any course that has the portfolio set up um, the teacher will be able to see what the what the students have uploaded to it and comments that other teachers have made as well. So for example, if I wanted to start one that just kind of addressed the GLEs, uh, let's say I asked a student to upload a paper that addressed this particular GLE, um, I, could, I could go ahead and do that across world history, uh, science, English, math, so on and so forth. I can add these categories here. Take a look at uh, my portfolio here. Edit views here. And I can share my portfolio here. This is where I would actually allow other teachers to, to see what the students have uploaded. Next block I want to look at is calendar. It's a very useful block. And uh, here's why. Calendar looks like this. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these just for the sake of uh, organization. Um, what Calendar will do is anytime I add an activity and I put a due date on it, it will automatically show up here, uh, which is really nice. What you've done is essentially created a planner for your students within Moodle. As long as you're setting the due dates correctly, there should be no question as to students knowing or not knowing due dates. Um, so that's a really nice feature. You don't have to do anything else other than set the due date in the activity. Now, if I wanted to add a, a separate event, uh, say for example, uh, I know um, they send out an email at the high school with the upcoming events for that month. Uh, it's a really easy thing to do just to take those events and put this in this calendar as well for your students. To do that, all you do is click on the uh, month, click add new event, you want to determine whether this is a user event, is this for me, is this a group event, is this just for say my second hour, is this a course event, 
or is this a, essentially a, a global event or site event, meaning it would affect everybody at the school? In this case, I'm just going to set it as a uh, course event. I'll click OK. I'll just put. You name it here. Put any description information there. Set the date. Uh, I'm just going to set this to the uh, 31st. Uh, you can have it repeat however you want to do that. I'll save changes. It'll show up here. And then I can go back to my course. And it'll show up on the calendar. All I have to do is hover over it. It'll tell me this. I can go to the event if I wanted to, and it would provide that information. So the calendar is a really useful block. Uh, quiz results. If I give a quiz, I can um, display results um, without showing names. I can display uh, just like the top eight results, um, so on and so forth. That is a useful uh, block. Random glossary entry. If you have a glossary, uh, and you have this block, it'll pull an entry out every day and display a new entry. RSS feeds, if you've ever um, used RSS feeds, you can put an RSS feed directly into your, uh, your Moodle here, and you do that with this. Uh, the functions of these are all pretty standard. They're all essentially the same uh, concepts that we've covered so far. Uh, that's why I'm just kind of pointing them out. And those are really the most uh, more useful blocks that I've found. But like I said, feel free to take a look at uh, these others and uh, see if there's any that can enhance your course.